Greetings. What I'd like to do is just briefly present some research by some other authors, and this relates to um, basically why do some women seek out incarcerated men as partners? And this um, idea came about to present in a, in, in a video because uh, Charlie Manson's getting married. The wedding bells will be ringing. And um, he's also marrying, I believe, a woman who is uh, 26 years of age, uh, much younger. And of course, the media frenzy has already started. Uh, my goal here is to just simply review a research article uh, to um, maybe begin to shed some light on understanding. Uh, and, and I'm not going to pass any moral judgment. I'll leave that to Dr. Phil and the rest of the uh, talk show hosts. But instead, let's look at some research. The study is published in the journal Deviant Behavior, Volume 35 in 2014 by the authors Slavikova and Panza. And it's titled Characteristics and Personality Styles of Women Who Seek Incarcerated Men as Romantic Partners, Survey Results and Directions for Further Research. And it's also found on page 885 to 902 if you want to uh, pull that original article uh, up and take a look at it. So, first they, they point out that very, very little research has been conducted on this particular topic. They went ahead and they used an online survey and they collected 89 uh, cases or responses from the website Met While Incarcerated. And they found that they had a very diverse group of women and um, they also found while it was common for um, their respondents to have had a history of being victimized and also family members involved in crime, uh, what they found uh, was not common was, was having a mental disorder or engaging in criminal activity themselves. So uh, there were um, uh, that, that the whole idea that that women who marry incarcerated men have mental disorders or are criminals is false. That's, those are two myths that they dispel here. What we do find is that they have a history of victimization and also family members involved in, uh, in, in, in crime. They also used uh, personality assessments and they found that this group that married incarcerated men w was more likely to score higher on um, the manipulation and the feeling inadequate scales. They also found that the type of person who um, was in their uh, group of those that married incarcerated men liked to have control and power over others. The group was also more likely to score higher on the neurotic, anxious, and introspective scales of the personality assessment. Uh, a bunch of other scales had minor elevations compared to the norm group and will not be uh, discussed here. So we begin to see a little bit of personality uh, assessment differences. And, and again, we cannot take this particular study and, and, and then relate it to um, a specific person. We don't want to uh, make that error at all. We're just beginning to look at some patterns and behaviors. But of course, there's going to be exceptions to um, uh, you know these findings that that fall outside of what I'm um, uh, presenting here. But then we wonder, well, what about theories? And and here they begin to look at theories of mate selection, and they find that most do not apply except the exchange theory of mate selection. So um, we begin to wonder. Well, what is it? And this brings me back to a lot of my uh, work I've done uh, previously, uh, but it brings me way, way, way back when I was a young man many, many years ago, and I was doing research in nightclubs at the time, and I remember this, this one uh, situation still, it's stuck in my memory for some reason. I was talking to this, um, this woman, and, and she was telling me about this man that was over in the corner drinking beer and talking to some people saying, this man is the baddest man. He's terrible. He's an SOB. I hate him. Oh, I wish he'd die in a traffic accident. Oh, I can't stand him. He's, he's mean. He has no respect for women. He's just nasty to the bone. I said, oh, okay. 
And he came over. I said, well, this will be interesting. And he said, hey, baby, how you doing? And um, she said, oh, fine. And she's very pleasant and nice to me. And he said, well, let's, why don't we go back to my apartment? She said, oh, okay. And she said, oh, nice meeting you and left. And I was dumbfounded. I, I, I thought there was going to be an argument or she was going to yell at him or say, don't talk to me again. You mean nasty person? No. And, and I began to wonder, hmm, he was your bad boy in that sense. And, and why, you know, she uh, was attracted to him yet hated and despised him uh, is, is a little bit um, confusing to this day. That, that kind of, you know, surprised me. I would ask if there are certain characteristics that attract someone in general to the bad boy or the bad girl, if you will. And I'd also be interested in looking at variations on this theme with same-sex couples and men who seek out incarcerated women. Uh, so we can do a, a, a much um, uh, larger comparative analysis. But like these authors found, overall, these women are a very diverse group and have, uh, you know, and are very similar to the general population in many ways. Uh, interestingly enough, um, I'm reading a lot of papers now as we wrap up this semester on serial murder. Uh, and um, one of the features that stands out a lot in the papers is that the serial murderer uh, fits in society. Many are married, have kids, have a job, and people are shocked when they find out that that person is indeed a serial murderer. In, in contrast, we begin to look at those that love him, those that marry him, after they know, after the fact. But here we're not looking in this study at serial murders. We're looking at um, those that are incarcerated, those that are, that are in prison. So that is a big difference there as well. And, and so in a sense, I'm really not talking about, um, you know, those that marry serial murders. That would be a whole different study when you compare different types of, of, of crimes. Uh, whatever the case might be, uh, the whole, um, in the whole scheme of things, there's not a whole lot of research out there, and um, there's a lot more speculation, but I congratulate these authors for beginning to, um, you know, study this phenomena, and hopefully we will see future research that addresses this issue. Thank you.